Welcome back to P1. Today we're going to look at differentiating x to the power of n. This is unit 8.3. Now, if you're following the Edexcel course or the textbooks, there are two units before this, 8.1 and 8.2. 8.1 talks about gradients of tangents. It's not really that necessary for your certainly for your examinations it's worth having a little look through and 8.2 is about finding the derivative this is not examined but it does give you an idea of where differentiating comes from in terms of finding the gradient so it is very very useful for helping you with your understanding and in terms of how you go about differentiating from first principles and the idea of a value h which if you look at it well you'll know what that means added to a coordinate a small distance h that one actually did show up in a small form in two previous past papers these were the October 2019 P1 paper and the January 2020 P1 paper. Now, both of these kind of examples I will go through at the end of this video. Okay, there's nothing to worry about. The derivative bit does give you a little bit of an idea, but you never have to prove it or be examined on it. So and I'm focusing on that stuff, but you know it is worth having a little look through so we're going to start with differentiating x to the power n so if i start with y equals x to the power n and i differentiate i get dy by dx is and i bring the n down and multiply so it becomes n times x and then I take one away from the power. Okay. Or if it was in terms of f of x, the process is still the same. Just how I write it is different. Okay. So the difference here is y will differentiate to dy by dx. And this is f of x. And this is sometimes used as f prime of x or the derivative of f of x with respect to x i often just say <laughs> f with a little dash um it doesn't really matter in terms of just going through your a levels but that's uh, the terminology for you now if i do have a number in front of my x when i then differentiate this so my dy by dx and multiply by that power of n so i end up with a multiplied by n multiplied by x and i take one away from the power okay it's very straightforward so let's look at a couple to get us started so y equals x to the power 8 when i differentiate this it becomes 8x to the power 7. You multiply by the power, take 1 away from the power. Number 2, my 3x to the power 5. So differentiate, you multiply by the power, take 1 away from the power. So multiply by 5 gives me 15x to the power 4. And question 3, again, same thing, multiply by the power, so we multiply by minus 6, and we take 1 away from the power, so we get minus 7. Okay, let's have a look at another three examples. So we've got f of x equals 3x to the power of half. So f dash of x, or f prime of x. We need to multiply by the power. So a half multiplied by 3, 3 over 2, take 1 away from the power. Number 5, 
Now with this one, the first thing I need to do is actually take this x to the top. So to do that, it's going to become x to the power negative 1. Then I can go ahead and differentiate. So multiply by negative 1 and take 1 away from the power. Now in this case, I like to put it back in the same form it was in in the question, but leaving it like this is perfectly acceptable. Now with question 6, we need to sort this out first, so 3x, now when I'm multiplying these, it's the same as adding the powers. And then when I'm dividing, it's taking away the powers. So I've got 3x to the power 8. Differentiating means I multiply by the power. So 3 8 or 8 3s are 24. And I take 1 away from my power. Okay, example 7. Find the gradient of the curve y equals 5 root x at the point 7 1 so the gradient is when I differentiate differential gives me the gradient at any point so y equals 5 root x now in terms of indices this would be 5 to the power a half sorry 5 times x to the power a half differentiating multiply by a half so 5 over 2 x and take 1 away from my power so it becomes x to the power negative a half now I'm just going to rewrite this like so so power a half is a square root and if it's a minus I can move it on to the bottom to make it a positive power then I want to substitute my coordinate in I only need the x coordinate when x equals 7 dy by dx is equal to 5 over 2 root 7 and if I was leaving it like that I would need to rationalize that third or if I need it as a decimal I could work it out as a decimal as well Okay, just depending on what you need for the question. If you were substituting it into something, you might substitute it in as it is before bothering to rationalise. Okay, as promised, um, January 2020 P1 paper is question three. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to write the full question out, but I'm just going to summarise the earlier bits and then talk through the, the bits that are important. And now in hindsight, this might have actually been better in the next video. But anyway, so the first part of the question is about finding the gradient to the tangent at point P. So that's about differentiating this, which gives me 2x plus 3, and then substituting in this point. So dy by dx would be 2 lots of 3 plus 3, which is going to give me 9. Now that's part A, but there's parts B and C which are interesting. So part B says there's a point Q, which has x coordinate 
3 plus h. So p is 3, so this is just a little bit past h. Now h is often used as a small value. It doesn't say either way in this case. Um, and then part b asks you to find in terms of h the gradient of the line p q so it wants me to find the gradient of p q so the first thing i want to do to find this gradient is difference in y's divided by difference in x's so there's my formula now i've only got the x coordinate up here so i'd also need the y coordinate so i'll do that in black over on the left so this is just substituting 3 plus h in to the formula or the equation for y now i'm going to do this quickly just so what i've got is h squared plus 9 h plus 16 my y2 minus and my y1 is 16 that's my value of p over here x2 is my 3 plus h and my x1 is 3 so simplifying the top i get h squared plus 9 h simplifying the bottom i just get h so that leaves me with h plus 9. Okay, and that's part b. So finding the gradient of a tangent is just the gradient between two points. Hopefully it hasn't been too difficult to follow so far. But it's part c that kind of has that link to what I was talking about earlier, which is the differentiating from first principles. Because differentiating from first principles uses this idea of an x-coordinate plus a small value h. So for part c, when it asks me to explain briefly the relationship between the answer to b and the answer to a, what I would need to do then is talk about how as h tends towards zero, the gradient of the tangent becomes the gradient at that point. So we're looking at as h tends to zero you can do this in words or symbols then our gradient p q will tend towards nine just move it around a little bit there but uh, and that will then mean that it is equal to the gradient of the tangent And something along those lines because what we're basically saying is that as h tends towards zero this gradient of my tangent pq is going towards just the tangent at that point p okay and that's what it's all about that's what differentiating from first principles is all about i'll just show you um the same one in the next paper although there's not a lot of difference. In fact, the only difference is the point P and the equation of the curve. Everything else is the same. The first step is to find the gradient at P. So doing your dy by dx is 4x in this case. So dy by dx is 4 times 2 or 8. And that is your part A, exactly the same. Part B then introduces the coordinate Q, and that it is 2 plus H. Okay, so the X value of it is 2 plus H. So we would also need the Y value, which if I'm replacing X with 2 plus H, I would get this. And it would want me to find the gradient of pq it's exactly the same as the other one gradient of pq is going to be my difference in y's divided by my difference in x's i'll fast forward this next bit i 
and then part C is all about explaining the relationship between parts A and part B and again it's the same as H tends towards zero you know the rest I'll fast forward the next bit as well Hope you found the first step into differentiating okay and you found this video useful especially the couple of questions at the end those are just showing you the only little bits from essentially 8.1 and 8.2 that you ever will need and again you know those papers are some of the early papers we haven't seen that for a little while now the last few papers at least um anyway if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and join the community. And if you found this video useful, just give me a thumbs up. Any questions, stick them down below. See you next time.